Welcome back, everybody. I'm KRX, and this is episode two of the Beginner Let's Play of Portugal. And what we did in episode one was we just looked at our environment. We just looked at it thematically. We're playing as a nation. We're trying to guide them through 400 years of alternate history. Who likes us? Who doesn't like us? What's our ecosystem look like? Where is our path to conquest? How do we expand the empire of Portugal? How do we strengthen the sort of its economy through war conquest? You know what I mean? Where do we expand? And we're thinking, you know, Morocco is going to be a mortal enemy. North Africa is going to be right for the taking. It's going to be easy to sort of team up with the other Christian nations and potentially attack. Well, it's not going to be easy, uh, but we'll be able to team up with Christian nations and, and attack the, the Northern African countries. Uh, we also need to push back the Sunnis from the Granada region here. So we are building up, we're using our diplomats to build a spy network in Granada. We're spending one diplomat to butter up England and make them happy, improve relations with England, because England's going to be a little upset by the fact that we've also sent our third diplomat to get an alliance with Castile. So England's going to be upset by that, but we should be able to balance those two alliances and make them both happy if we just dedicate some of our diplomats to, to literally just buttering them up, right, and keeping them happy. So one of our diplomats is working in London. One of them is working as a spy in Granada to prepare for war, lay the, lay the groundwork for war. And one of them is returning home after getting the alliance with Castile. So if we zoom in and we look at our, 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 let's actually look at our actual country of Portugal at this point, right? We can see these little fort icons here. These just represent provinces that have forts. So these are more defensive provinces. So Ceuta has a fort. That's good because Ceuta is very vulnerable, right? To Moroccan conquest and, and other sort of foreign, other wars and things, right? Ceuta having a fort, very, very important. Um, and then we have some forts over here near our capital of Liz, Lisboa, sort of surrounding our capital of Lisboa. But there's no fort in Beja or these other provinces, so those won't be as uh, invulnerable during war. Um, but for the most part, that's going to be okay. We have 14k right here, so if we highlight these guys, these are this is our standing army. We have 14,000 troops, 10,000 infantry, 4,000 cavalry. That's our current standing army right now. They don't have any leader at the moment. But this is our this is our army. If we click on these, uh, the small icon here. This is actually our navy in port in Lisboa. We have three heavy ships, and ten transports in one fleet. And transports, of course, just used for shuttling guys around. One transport can move one thousand units at a time, so ten transports can move ten thousand units. The heavies are just very uh, proficient combat ships, and the light ships are faster. They can protect trade but we have a different fleet of five light ships. They can also be used to explore. And of course, it is our destiny, right? It is the Portuguese destiny to explore the new world and to colonize and, and spread a Portuguese culture to the new world. So, and luckily, because we have these islands, we'll be able to do that very effectively, right? We are already well on our way to the new world. <laughs> we have a nice, a nice jumping off point there. If we click on this big giant crest in the top left, this is going to open up our internal country screen right and we have a bunch of tabs up here right now it's remembering that we were just talking to granada okay so we could we could very easily just hit this button down here to go back to our own screen so this is back to this is the portuguese diplomacy screen it's reminding us we have a truce with granada it's telling us that we're buttering up our relations with actively uh, strengthening relations with uh, england and we have an alliance with england we are going to have alliance with castile we just haven't unpaused the game yet we're going very slow. We're just looking at the internal situation of our country this time. Whereas in the last episode, we looked at our surrounding environment and made decisions based on that. Now we're just like, what's going on with our economy? What's going on with our army? Well, we can see how big our army is, but should we make it bigger? Can we make it bigger? Like these are, can, are we could see our navy, but should we make it, how, how can we, could, should we build more ships? Should we make it bigger? What kinds of ships should we build, right? These are all questions that we can ask. These are all good questions that we will ask and answer in this episode here. But these are all kinds of different tabs, right? We have religion, we have stability and expansion, we have missions. Okay, missions might actually be helpful in sort of understanding what we should be doing. Um, we have different ideas, uh, technology here, right? Trade, economy. So there's all these different tabs up here, all these different tabs up here. And for the most part, you can kind of just go through these and kind of figure out what's going on. And, and I don't necessarily want to talk about these in too much detail because we don't have any context for this stuff. But we can see in our court screen, we can see our leader, who's actually only 12 years old. It's a regency. This is a regency for Alfonso, okay? So Alfonso is 12 years old, and Alfonso is not in charge yet. Right now, we have a, we have a regency with four administrative skill, 
two diplomatic skill, and one military skill. Now these can roll anywhere from zero to six. So four is a little bit above average, two is a little bit below average, and one is not very great. Alfonso's a, a three, two, two. That's um, not great, but, but only a little below average. It's okay. And that's all totaling down here into our nation's total administrative power our diplomatic power and our military power. We haven't talked about this stuff, but this stuff basically just in, in a general sense is important for developing our country and gaining technologies. These are, these are and customizing our nation. So these are very important stats uh, and very important uh, units uh, of, of currency that we can spend in the future. We can see we have some built up right now, but we're gonna be getting seven per, the skill seven in this means that we get that much per month. So we get seven administrative per month, five diplo per month, for military per month. We're not going to talk about how to use this because you can use this stuff in hundreds of different ways. I kid you not. These are these are the lifeblood of the game. So having good, strong leaders is, is important. And this leader right here is just okay. Just okay. A little bit bad. Um, but we can see that we have some of these powers built up right now. And again, we can save these to, to gain technologies and stuff. We have no advisors. Remember that tab up here that we sort of quickly looked at at the first bit of the screen? It says, you have free advisor slots advisors okay so we could click on these to get new advisors but they cost a price they cost them they have a monthly salary and they have a price to sort of a signing bonus basically right and they give little different benefits that we don't quite know the context of here but they do increase our administrative skill they increase our administrative skill if we get an administrative advisor that makes sense same with diplomacy and there's different little they give us little national powers but they also give us more accumulation of these powers to help us push towards technologies faster and get other things done faster and of course you know just like if you've played civilization before right or age of emperors or something if you have a technological advantage that's really powerful and so it is in, in this game as well and military advisors as well and these some of these guys could be really important maybe in in war right having a military advisor during times of war that makes sense that makes thematic sense but the thing is these guys cost a salary and i don't know if we can afford these guys yet so what's actually like Let's actually go through and try to try to see if we can get to the economy screen here. Uh, government. It's just talking about our government here. We're a kingdom. Um, this we can change our government here, but we don't really have any information or context as to why we would change our our government. Uh, we we are Portuguese is our culture. We've accepted the Portuguese, um, but the Moroccan culture is non accepted. So so the Moroc we already know that that we don't accept the Moroccan culture. Now this is something that potentially we can change, right? If we have a certain amount of Moroccan culture development, we can, we might actually be able to hit a button and actually move Moroccan. We might be able to actually embrace the Moroccan culture. It won't it won't supersede the Portuguese culture, but we can maybe live in harmony. We might be able to take action in the future to live in harmony with the Moroccan culture because non-accepted cultures here may actually move themselves over into the accepted culture category. In fact, it says down here that we can promote cultures zero to two. So we can promote cultures. It's just that we don't have enough Moroccan representation right now to promote the Moroccan culture. But in the future, we might want to actually do that. We might want to do that. We'll just have to wait and see when we can do that. So this is our diplomacy screen. Enemies, rivals, we've just gone through this already. Uh, diplomatic relations, right? We, we talked about how that's a very important number. It gives us a little uh, summary of our court as well, our, our leader and, and, and information about them. And just a lot of summary information that we haven't talked about yet. But here we go, guys. We are in the economy tab and we're losing money. We have a negative balance right now. So there's no way we could afford it. In fact, we're losing 0.05 ducats per month. You don't make a lot of money per month in this game. So this is not good. Um, and, and we're going to have to see why are we losing? What are we spending our money on? Where are we making our money? How could we enhance the elements that are causing us to make money? And how can we reduce the elements that are causing us to lose money? This is actually a very important screen where we can thematically go through this and learn a lot about the game. Just asking questions about the screen, like why are we paying this? Why are we buying this? Why are we paying for this? What costs money? What doesn't cost money? And how do we maintain a balanced budget? Um, this is not like uh, many games uh, where you sort of just get a balanced budget and you just hold it forever. You just make money magically. Like there will be times where we're losing money and there will be times where we're making money. And the way that we use our money and the way that we invest our money is going to be very important for the future stability of our country and as it, as it grows. So we're getting a certain amount of our money from taxation. That makes sense. All of our provinces are providing some level of taxation. We're getting it from production. Our provinces are also producing goods and, and that's producing some 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 economic gains but but not as much as taxation taxation seems to be the main way that we're making money we're also just making money by collecting it from from seville okay so we're collecting 
money from Seville. We haven't actually even clicked on the trade map mode yet, but there is a trade map mode and it breaks the world up into the different trade nodes. And our trade capital is in Seville. That means that we collect money from Seville. We saw that we had two merchants, but we saw that they weren't available. That's because right now we can see that our merchants are actively working in the Safi node to push trade. We are moving ducats from Safi to Seville because this is where we collect our money. This is where we collect our, our trade influence here. This is where we collect all of the money that we get from trade in Seville. So we're trying to push as much value, as much wealth back to Seville. And same as we're, we're pushing some from Tunis. Now, what we might be able to do actually is we might be able to actually pull the, one of these back and we might actually want to have a, a trader working in Seville because we actually don't even have a trader working in Seville. We're earning 2.93 ducats here. It might be better for us to actually move one of these guys to help boost this value because traders, essentially what traders do is they boost the, the trade power um, of, of these, these areas. See, we have 10% control over this money right now. So some of this money is getting collected here by Morocco because they want to collect it because this is their trade node, right? They want to be collecting this money here. So some of it's being collected before it can get moved out. Same with Tunis. Tunis is collecting a lot of this money. Some of it's getting pushed up to Genoa, actually. Some of it's uh, not even not even going to Seville. So it's going to different... You can see these arrows here. It's getting pushed in different directions. Uh, Seville, though, some of the Seville is actually getting pushed to Genoa, which we don't really want. We got one and a half ducats over here that we're missing out on. Not This is getting split, right, between uh, Portugal and Castile and Granada and... Um, those three nations primarily, right? Because we could see this is because uh, Castile definitely has a lot of influence over this this region as well. But some of this, people are using their own traders. People that nations from this region here are using their traders to actually pull on on the power from Seville and move these ducats out of here, move these ducats out of here, so that we have less value here to make less value in Seville. Twenty seven percent. If we use this merchant here, who only has an eight percent, you know, not not a lot of control there. We're not really affecting things that much in Tunis. But if we move this merchant over here to Seville, we might be able to boost this number up to increase our, 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 our retention of money, right? We might be able to increase our retention of money here by quite a bit. We're not going to quite worry about that right now, but I'm saying trade might be something that we can bolster. Taxation, it, the only way we're going to increase this really is by getting favorable policies that can, that can increase taxation and by taking new land, right? More provinces. Our provinces are producing taxes and production. So if we take more land then we'll get more taxes. That makes sense, right? So military conquest will actually help us boost uh, taxation and production. Because we haven't actually looked at the production map mode or just the goods map mode, but we can see that these provinces produce goods. And you can see that certain provinces produce goods that are of more value, right? Cloth is more valuable than fish. And, and we can just see that by clicking on this province and looking at the fish is at 2.5, whereas cloth is at 3 or sugar down here. In fact, there's gold down here. In fact, we have gold in the Morocco region. In fact, there's gold up here actually in Castile. So Castile has a gold mine. And gold, as you can imagine, it's a zero down here because it's, it's based on other factors. But gold essentially just gives you tons of just direct money. Gold is, is, a, is a special good that, that is very valuable. Very valuable. So let's go back to this uh, crest. It's good to remember we were on the economy stream. So we got taxes, production, trade. Great. So we're making 10 ducats. We're not really going to be able to affect that too much. We might be able to make a little bit more in trade. We'll have to work on that a little bit. That's kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a future concept that we're not concerned with. Can we actually just save money? Can we save money? Maybe that's a better way to look at this. Is, is What are we spending our money on? Why are we spending 10 ducats a month? Well, we're spending it on state maintenance, okay? That's just maintenance for our provinces, right? Our provinces are in states. And we're spending money to maintain those states. Nothing we can do about that. We have fort maintenance. Three ducats are paying for three forts. We have three forts, but these are incredibly expensive. We're spending three ducats on these forts. We're almost as spending as much on the forts as we are our army. We're spending more on the forts than we are in Navy, right? Two ducats for the Navy, four ducats for the army. And that's basically it. These are This is all we're paying for. We're paying for our army, we're paying for our Navy, and we're paying for our forts. Now, you can notice that with the army and the Navy, we actually have sliders here, and I can actually reduce maintenance of the fleet. Now, that makes the fleet not ready for battle. The fleet will not be ready for battle, but they'll just be resting. It's there's We can do this. We can actually lower the fleet maintenance here. There might be something else we can do with the fleet, though. So we might not need to lower the fleet maintenance, but that does actually save us about a ducat. It cuts it in half, right? 
the total maintenance cost gets cut in half, but the troops and the Navy are completely inadequate to do battle. They are not ready for war at all. They've lost, they have to re, reorganize themselves. They lose all of their morale and reorganization if we lower their maintenance, but we can actually lower the army maintenance as well. If we're not expecting to go to war right away, we have to, it's going to take time to build up claims on Granada. We have a good buffer right now against Castile. Um, we also have Morocco, who is sort of, um, actually Morocco is the scariest, right? Potentially Morocco is the scariest, but we have a good ally in Castile. And we have a good ally in England and Morocco would be crazy to declare war on us because that would actually call in our allies, right? Our allies would defend us. So we totally have the option to lower our, our, our army maintenance. We could lower this and then when we're ready for war, we could just raise it back up. But I actually want to look at this fort maintenance right here. So we have a fort in Ceuta, very, very important fort, right? Just positionally, it's surrounded by enemies on all sides. Very, very important. There's two things we can do with our forts. We can, we can, and we have one in Lisboa as well. So if we go to this tab here, it says there's a garrison down here. 3,000 uh, people in the garrison. So we're learning new elements of this screen, right? We're not going through the whole thing. We've talked about culture and religion. We've talked about the diplomacy, right? A little diplomacy bit here. If you're clicking on another nation, it doesn't show up with ours because this is more of a build screen. So we can actually raise troops from here and stuff, but that's not important. We can, we've looked at unrest and, and we've looked at garrison. So in this, in Beja, there's no garrison because there's no fort. So there's no fort here. There's no defense in, in war. People can just come here and just take this land and control it. But then again, if there's no fort there, then we could just take it back very quickly too. So it's not, it's not really that actually detrimental. Forts are the, the choke points, right, that, that you want to uh, make sure that these provinces don't fall. This fort, right, we have two forts right here. We have garrisons in both of these provinces. We might not actually need. Forts protect the surrounding area, right, thematically. And this is our capital. It might be good to keep the fort in Lisboa, but I honestly don't think we need the fort here in Evora. So what we could do is we could actually just destroy the, ca the castle. It's costing us one ducat a month. Each of these forts is costing us one ducat a month. We can actually go into this. This is the building screen. So we can open this up, this tab to show the buildings. We have different build slots here. We have a castle built. We have two other available build slots. But there's just a castle in this province. No other buildings. I think we actually destroy this fort. I think we destroy that fort. And if we go back here, we can now see that we are now making money because we have... Destroyed a fort. Now we're only spending two ducats a month on our fort maintenance. Now the other thing we can do is just the same way that we can sort of like reduce army maintenance and reduce navy maintenance. We can actually reduce fort maintenance, but you can do it on specific forts. And that's this button down here. The, this fortress is fully maintained, costing us one ducat every month. If we click that button, this fort is mothballed, costing us 0.5 ducats every month. Mothballed fortresses cost half, only half maintenance, but have no garrison ready to defend them. That means that there's no one defending this province anymore, but we're not paying for the fort, but we can activate it again to get it online. And it takes a little bit of while for that to rebuild the garrison, but for the most part, it doesn't take, it only, it might, it might take a few months, right, to rebuild the garrison. Lisboa is pretty far away, I don't think there's any immediate threat of like a Moroccan invasion and Morocco would have to get through Ceuta. So I think we leave this ungarrisoned. That's going to save us half a ducat. So now we're at one and a half ducats. One and a half ducats. In fact, we could actually unmothball Ceuta. This is a little bit riskier. We'll leave that online just thematically, right? We don't, we don't want this fort to be unmaintained. We want this one to be maintained. It's on our front. It's on the front with the enemy. But I think we could actually lower the maintenance of our army. Because we could get those guys back in, in order, no problem. And now all of a sudden we're making tons of money. In fact, we're making so much money, maybe we do hire an advisor. Maybe if there's a really critical advisor over here, a national production efficiency, that'll increase the money we get from, from production. That makes sense, right? We just saw that we make money from our production. So increasing that by 10%, where we only have a 2% modifier right now. But if we increase that by 10%, we'll get a little bit more. It's not going to cover the cost of the guy, but he is going to, of course, give us administrative skills. So that's good too. So we could, we could get advisors or we might actually spend this newfound money to build a larger army or to build a larger navy. We haven't actually considered that. We haven't actually considered that. So we could actually use this extra money. Now we're making three and a half ducats a month, which is actually quite a bit. And we'll, we'll start to learn about how much sort of every ducat is worth and how, how, 
how we can, you know, what, what a ducat basically is, allows us to buy. Well, we know that one ducat gives us one fort. And we know that our entire army of 14,000 only costs us four ducats a month. Our entire navy, or 15, 18 ships in our navy, only costs us two ducats a month. So three, three and a half ducats is quite a bit. We could get a much larger navy, potentially. We could get a much larger army, potentially. If we keep going through this tabs, trade, right? We talked a little bit about trade. Um, there might be ways to optimize this, but we're not going to go through any of this stuff. This is just a bunch of random numbers and stuff and modifiers and things. We don't know anything about this. This, this has no context for us at all right now. Uh, this is our technology screen. So we could look here, like if we wanted to get the next administrative technology, it's going to cost us 600 power points. We talked a little bit about PowerPoints, right? We only have 100 right now. We're getting seven per month. So we're slowly just working up towards these different technologies. Uh, diplom uh, administrative technology, diplomatic technology, military technology, so on and so forth. Ideas. This unlocks, our first idea group unlocks, it says here at na National Ideas at, at Administrative Technology 5. Unlocks at National Ideas, parentheses, 5. So it's saying administrative technology five. We're barely coming up on administrative technology four. So it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit before we get the ideas unlocked. So we're not gonna worry about that so much. But we can see that Portugal has some some sort of Portuguese ideas here. We have some initial modifiers to our trade range and to our trade efficiency. So we're kind of like a big trading nation. We're a colonial nation, a trading nation. We we want a strong navy, and we want to uh, we want to expand. Uh, our empire uh, from a trade perspective, right? How it can help us in, in, in trade and in growth and prosperity. If we go to the missions here, we have this big giant tab, but this can, and we work our way from the top down, but these are different goals and things that we could start to work towards. Push to India, conquer Hormuz, uh, settle Indonesia, right? These are, these are different things that in the far, far future that we can follow sort of the historical pathing of, of Portugal. And here we, uh, we can actually see that this this right here is telling us that we need to have discovered any province in West African coast area. Okay, so it wants us to actually discover a province. Has discovered any province? So this is a mission to go discover Africa's west coast. So to go discover this area down here. So that's going to require uh, explorers and stuff like that in the future. In the future. So we're not quite there yet. So that's going to be a future goal. Uh, it says total army size at least 100% of force limit. We haven't even talked about force limit. But this mission is telling us to build an army up to our force limit. Okay. Okay, so we've learned about force limit. We know that there's a force limit to how big our army can go. And again, we just like diplomatic relations, we can go over the force limit. Especially if it's a tough war and we're outnumbered, we might want to go over our force limit. We might want to train a larger army than what our force limit can sustain. But... There will be a cost penalty, right? It's going to be more expensive to maintain army, an army, if we go over the force limit. Just like it's more diplomatically expensive to maintain more relationships over a diplomatic relation ship slot. If we go to this button here, we haven't. It's not quite near the. It's right near the crest, but it's called the production interface. If we click on this, it opens up with the land units, and this is where we can build units. We can just click on the infantry, and we can just click on provinces and build units. It says that we have a force limit of eighteen. But we only have 14,000 troops. It costs us 10 ducats to build a unit, and it'll cost us 0.2 ducats per month to afford them. So if we build four more units, we'll be at 100% of our force limit. So we could just have each of these provinces training a troop. Every province is sort of like an area that we can use to build a unit, whether a ship or whether a, a land unit, right? So we're building land units in these areas. This is 4,000. It also costs us manpower it doesn't does it actually even say that i don't even think it shows that here um but you can see that we've actually lost manpower by doing this our manpower is our reserve how many people we can actually draft if we have no manpower we can't train any more troops this way we would instead have to hire mercenaries mercenaries are more expensive but they significantly more expensive they cost three times more to raise and they cost almost two and a half times as much per month to maintain but they do not cost us manpower. So it's a way to trade manpower for money. So mercenary, but right now we have, we have, we had 11,000 Portuguese uh, men ready to join the ranks, ready to be drafted. And um, our maximum is actually 18,000. Our country, our sort of, our equilibrium of our country is about 18,000 manpower. And that's going to slowly be trending up. We're gaining about 159 per month, it says. So it's very important that we need this manpower because the manpower is what replenishes our our regiments when they take damage, when when they take casualties. When we fight, when we go to war and we fight with these 18,000 men, 
some of them will die. And those people need to be replaced from the manpower pool. So if we run out of manpower, we can't replenish our regiments anymore. And we will be battered and we will be fighting with broken regiments. And that is, of course, incredibly inefficient from a combat perspective. So we need to make sure that our manpower is healthy and strong. And, and this is a resource, essentially, that we need to use during war to make sure that we continue. To, it's a stamina thing, right? If we run out of manpower, in some ways, we may have lost the war. We may have lost the war unless we have a bankroll, unless we can bankroll armies, mercenaries with money, right? So we raise up, and, and this is our goal, is to get up to 100% force limit. We're doing that now. We're building 4,000 men. That'll get us up to our force limit. Um, we want trustworthy allies. It says have two countries allied with Portugal and have at least 150 opinion of Portugal. Well, we're working on that, right? We've just allied Castile and we've allied England. We start actually with England, right? Oh, look, we could actually go see England's army. They have 28,000 men sitting uh, near their capital right there. And they have a large fleet, six heavies, 14 transports, or sorry, 17 transports and nine lights. So they have a much larger, they have double our Navy size and uh, double our army size right now. But we're changing that a little bit by training up some more guys. So we are going to try to butter up our, we need to get them to an opinion of 150. Right now, Castile's only at 25. So we're going to have to work on Castile a little bit. But that but that will be something where we want to get these guys into a trustworthy position. We want to get them locked in. Have a high income. Okay, it's not going to, this is going to be a long-term goal, right? It says have an income of at least 19.3. Our income is 12.9. So there's not really going to be any way that we can adjust that just right now. It's going to take time, right? Through conquest, right? By conquering new land, we'll be able to improve our taxation and our trade influence and our, and our production influence as well, right? So so this is going to be a little time consuming to inc we can't really increase our income um in our in our current position that much and then this one right here says um competitive advantage have a navy size of at least 100 percent force so we have a mission to actually build up our army but we also have a mission to build up our navy let's go to the navy units here in the production tab we only need two more ships to get to our navy force limit the question is what do we build here heavies are incredibly expensive they cost half a ducat a month two heavies would cost us quite a bit more money now the nice thing is heavies are very 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 powerful in war morocco starts with four heavies we might actually want to get heavies to be able to go and, and right now we only have three heavies right we checked our navy we only have three it actually tells you down here a summary of all your ships three heavies right now we might need to to overtake morocco and go above that so we might want to build two heavies alternatively we could build light ships which are very cheap relatively um they cost 20 to build and the heavies are only 50 and 50 to build so there's not too much cheaper to build them but significantly cheaper to maintain them it's only 0.04 ducats per month we could have tons of light ships they basically don't cost as much of anything galleys here galleys are very specialized ships that are good in the mediterranean they're not going to do that well in the open seas and then cogs are, are 0.04 per month as well. I'm just looking at that base maintenance cost right there in that tooltip to understand how much this is going to cost us, right? The cost up front is kind of not really a big deal. Um, what, co what What is more of a big deal is, is how much this is going to, the sustained effect on our economy long term. And you know what I'm realizing? We only have 88 ducats left. So if I build one heavy, I can't afford a second heavy. So let's build one heavy to match, at least match the Morocco, the Moroccan fleet. And then I'll build one light. And that's most of our money spent. And we are working on two missions now. We're working on building up to our force limit. That's going to give us a morale of armies. That's going to make everybody in the army really happy. And that's going to help them fight with more confidence. Morale, if we can think about that thematically, right? Having higher morale troops means that they're less likely to want to desert and retreat. That's really, really good. Having more morale is a very important modifier. And then a lower land maintenance modifier. People are just happy to be a part of the army. You can pay them less. They're just happy to be a part of the army. The army is, in, is it's regal. It's, it's prestigious. Um, and you can actually pay people a little bit less uh, to be in the army. And then over here, we can gain diplomatic power and naval tradition by 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 getting this competitive advantage. That's also going to have us start working on the uh, the Tangiers, conquer Tangiers. These chain, these missions chain into each other. So this one's going to go into a mission to expand Portugal, just a generic mission to conquer more land. We're going to do we're going to try to do that anyways. And this one's going to expand into a specific mission to conquer Tangiers. So if we hover over that, it highlights Tangiers and, and sort of that purple line there. So we are going to, uh, we need, our next mission will be to own Tangiers. Okay. 
And that'll actually get us administrative power and some free claims. Free claims on Morocco. So that'll give us a, a means of conquering Morocco. A, a justification to conquer Morocco. But I think that is a good episode too. We have looked at our... We've gone through a lot of these tabs. We've looked at our economy screen. We've built. We've looked at our missions tabs. We've started to work on our economy. We've made it so that we're making good money. And we're also building up our military and preparing for future war. We have not unpaused the game yet. Next episode, we probably will. Okay. So we are doing what we can internally before we unpause the game. There are still more tabs that we should look at in the next episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. This is a slow um, sort of beginner tutorial, step-by-step -step tutorial for Portugal with no DLCs, right? We're not using any of the DLC features in this. We do stream on Twitch EU4 all the time, and it's a great place to ask questions and get specific answers to specific questions. Otherwise, we're going to just try to go through everything thematically step by step. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.